It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So today it's really exciting because I am getting to check out some community made switches. Now, what do you mean by community switches? You might be asking. Well, these are some switches that have been put together with the Australian and New Zealand keyboard community in mind. Uh, so this video is made possible by AE Boards and the Keyboard Treehouse because they've supplied me these switches for review. Uh, however, of course, everything and anything that I say, my opinions on these switches are 100% my thoughts alone. So we're going to have a look at these switches, look at what they look like on the website, and then I'll pull them out and check them, uh, you know, give my thoughts and feel and their isolated switch sound using what I've got down here on the table below. And then maybe a little bit later when I have an opportunity to put them into a board, we'll do a bit of a sound on that. But that's probably going to be a separate video compared to this one. So let's switch over to the website. Now, these switches have been, I think, uh, around conceptually for a while now, but it wasn't until uh, late last year, early this year, when AE boards started doing switches with the Navy switches, that the community switches really became a thing. Uh, so Eric from AE boards reached out to me and said, hey, would I be interested in trying some out and checking them out, reviewing them? And I said, of course, by all means. And so Eric, being the cool guy that he is, sent some to me. Uh, <laughs> so here is the keyboard treehouse. Uh, and funnily enough, I've actually not tried Navy's or the RAID switches. Uh, but down here you can see it's the All Clax switch, which is a tactile switch. And All Clax is a pun, of course, for our New Zealand brethren here, uh, being the All Blacks. And the Snag switches, which is a linear community switch, that represents the Australian community because these colours uh, come from a well-known hardware chain of stores here in Australia. Uh, now, I actually don't know how many switches you get for that price. I didn't even look. I just opened this up just in preparation for this video. Uh, so for this uh, summoning colors from the New Zealand fern, nylon bottoms, milky top uh, with a white MPE stem, 62 gram double spring factory oiled. So that that's pretty cool. 35 pieces for $22.75. Uh, and I think it's in Australian dollars. So, but you know, if you come to this site and you are from a different country and a different currency, that price may change. So just please be aware of that. I do get comments uh, when I look at stuff locally here and people talk about how expensive it is when, well, you have to consider a lot of the time, sometimes those prices are actually scaled in Australian dollars, not US dollars. Uh, so they've actually provided a little force curve here as well. Uh, and then the snag switches, which are these ones, same price. So what is it? We're talking about a polycarbonate top with a polyethylene stem and a nylon bottom. Once again, they're also 62 gram. So a little bit on the lighter side. Packs of 35 and uh, it's a linear switch. Uh, <laughs> snags, sausage sizzle, sausage sanger, a sanger being a sandwich. Um, <laughs> a staple of a weekend visit and true highbrow culinary cuisine. Very much so. Uh, there are crowds and lines for the old uh, snag sanger at uh, local hardware stores. All right, and here is the actual force curve for that switch as well. So that's actually pretty exciting. So I've got the packet here. Um, it is sealed, but it does have my address on it. So let's, uh, mm. that's, it is, it is actually still taped up here. I haven't opened it yet, but I'm going to just open that off screen because, you know, the whole doxing thing. All right.
So that's what the package looks like there. Okay, bit of bubble wrap. And, oh! Okay, so I got sent uh, two packets of each. So there is the... So there's 70 there and 70 there, so that'll let me build a 60% uh, keyboard pretty much, which is which is great. Uh, so let's have a look at the first one here, which is the, uh, the all clacks, which is the tactile. So there you go, community switch round one, and it's a milky top with the black bottom, and it is five pin. Now, it's nice that they come sealed, but at the same time, a little bit of um, like a, a Ziploc type bag probably would have been uh, easy to deal with. But most people these days are going to put their switches into another container anyway, or they'll probably go into uh, like a box bag straight into a build, whatever it is. Okay, so. Ooh, okay, that's pretty snappy. It doesn't actually feel that light and I think that that actually works out pretty well it's a very hard bottom out on that actually um, interesting interesting they're fairly smooth uh, that is it's a it's quite tactile but it's not like a reverse like a negative tactile switch where you hit a hard lip and then it just falls away it does have that increased bump uh, but it does actually ramp up and it is quite quite tactile now if I'm just gonna so I've got this little uh, laser ninja advanced switch tester that I've been using for a while now um, I'm just gonna make sure I use the right orientation for it for the most part uh, so I'll clip Clip that in. Okay, so I've got it there. Kind of amplifies the sound a bit. <clears throat> Maybe. Not sure if the microphone's picking that up or not because I'm not seeing it on the waveform. Uh, so here's my tactile sort of in this mid region here with the browns across. So Just trying to find something that has sort of a very similar response and stiffness to it. Well, the the browns are definitely much much softer in their tactility. This uh, kale brown is actually kind of similar spring weight ish, but that's probably like a 60, 65 maybe. At the linear, getting into the the gator on the the Arctos switch is over here with a weird bump to it. It's definitely more tactile than the uh, Zelio, I feel. It's also more pronounced than T1s. But the hard bottom out on it's weird. Uh, so just to explain what I'm talking about, uh, I'm just going to pull out this T1 that I've got here. I'll mount the T1 in. Okay. So uh, what have I got here that I can use? stuff everywhere as a good tinkerer does okay right so when i press the t1 stem it goes all the way down it goes it goes all the way in and you can see that the stem sinks all the way into the top of the housing okay when i press on this long pole uh, stem here it stops right there that's i'm pushing on that 
hard and you can see like the paddle pop stick here is flexing so that long bottom pole that is in this is giving you a really hard bottom out it, it feels like a quite short travel and if you're a hard typer that's going to give you feedback straight away because you're hitting that bottom out much much faster and I think that adds to the tactility to it. If I go very carefully and gently so I don't bottom out, the T1 with that negative tactility fall off is actually more tactile because of that hard lip. But when I'm pressing it at normal speed, it feels more tactile because I'm hitting that bottom out when I'm expecting a later bottoming out. If that makes sense it does to me <laughs> but i hope i can kind of make what i'm feeling uh you know have that expressed um thought behind it so the the shorter travel before bottom out means you will feel the bottom out sooner and it increases the sensation of a tactile type response uh, if you're a if you're a really hard typer that bottoms out really hard, I don't know if you would like that or not. Now I'm actually going to go and put a keycap on this so I can um, feel what it's like. The sixty two spring weight. Is really interesting because it feels heavier than 62 but i think that's probably the the tactile bump in that is helping but it's it is definitely that bottoming out it is also quite loud because of that bottoming out now if i take that off and i put it onto the t1 the t1 has a a lower pitch to it whereas the the all clack has a higher pitch to it which doesn't really surprise me i guess because that harder bottoming out is probably causing that more uh tinny sound yeah i'm i'm undecided i do like the tactility the shorter travel if i if i press both of these dsa caps down right they're all hard mounted into this it is it is noticeably different in how far down it goes definitely different definitely different whether it's a good different or it's a bad different uh, i honestly can't tell right now just by isolated switches so I definitely will have to revisit these once I have a chance to put them into some kind of board and do a bit of typing on it. So that's really interesting. So that is the uh, all caps uh, tactile right there. Okay, so let's <clears throat> extract them. Now, I don't know what prices are these days for a lot of switches because I'm not really generally in the market for buying uh, expensive switches anyway. So I don't have a lot to, to compare about switch-wise, but $23 for 35 switches is okay locally uh, because a lot of the high-end switches tend to be a dollar plus each. So in that in that concept, because they're a limited-run switch and it is a community switch, it's not, you know, somebody or a factory that's doing a massive, massive run on switches, I think price-wise that's actually okay. Right, so these are the uh, snag switch. The uh, the color on them is actually quite nice. So there's, there's the snag switch. You can see the, uh, the, <laughs> the, the hardware store colors on it that I'm not gonna name because I don't wanna potentially get into any trouble. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> you want to have a look at the snag switch? Um, 
interesting interesting the coloring on the stems are actually interesting the the plastic on it uh let me have a look at what the have they got detail okay so the stem material is red mixed polyethylene uh let's see if the camera will will catch see how interesting that the color blending is on the plastic that as it's been sort of put through the mold and whatnot it has that different that sheen to it you know i don't know how well the plastic is mixed in the actual mixing process and the dye and the master is is blended together because obviously the polyethylene is probably white or something like that when it's native so the red dyed um polyethylene the blending on it i think it adds character to it but you're not going to see it anyway because it's going to be uh under a keycap right the rest of it color wise i think it's pretty cool all right so how does it feel as far as the linear goes it's all right it's fairly smooth It's got a bit of wobble on it, uh, so let me just mount this in. Oh, it's, it's, there we go, a little bit on the tight side. All right, so we, uh, you can see, you know, it's got, it's got some wobble to it, but you know, it's probably not as bad as it looks. Uh, the actual top housing is pretty snug, so I don't think adding films is going to make any difference because if I'm moving, if I'm moving the stem, the housing isn't moving, right? So the housing's not really sliding around, which means if you're going to try and film these, it won't necessarily make it any better. Uh, in terms of the slack on that and it wobbling around. Uh, if we have a look at our linears, there's about as much on creams and clears. It's just as much on getter on yellows, as much on reds, <laughs> and as much on on uh, blacks. So you know, all fair and fair. I mean, it's definitely not like an Otemu. Uh, sky switch where that has a crazy amount of uh stem wobble on it so just to just to show you what i'm talking about if i can get that mounted in yeah there we go okay so there's there's the sky and like it has a lot of movement going on in it so you know I would say that it's uh, it's a little bit better than uh, than that Termo switch. It's pretty smooth, but interestingly enough, it has a slightly long pole as well. Now the Termo switch is a tactile, so you're not really going to be comparing that. Uh, but <clears throat> I don't have a lot of linears really for comparison, but let's just take the the creams, the NK creams here, because they're quite a popular linear at the moment, especially uh, for people who want to break them in. So <clears throat> let's put that in and wait for the focus. Okay, so if we depress the creams and we go sideways, that goes almost flush against the housing the top and if we depress that it sticks out just it's like a millimeter maybe maybe just a millimeter and a half more than say like the cream switch sits in so i wouldn't say that it's a super short uh travel compared to say these all clacks but um whether that's just you know variance and tolerance more than anything else it's it's not noticeable unless if you're looking for it now in terms of these are both stock right i have not done anything to this cream switch if you want to hear the the stock sound of this is the cream switch 
and this is the snag switch. Now, the microphone's probably not picking that up, but the snag switch, you can hear the uh, bottom out and the upstroke. The cream switch, you can actually hear the rubbing. So the, the scratchiness of it is actually worse on the cream switch than on the snag switch, which is probably why a lot of people are always talking about lubing and breaking in the cream switches to get a better feel out of them compared to a lot of other switches. Uh, let's put a keycap on them both for relative comparison purposes. Okay, so <clears throat> the blue switch is the snag and the green is the, the cream. See, they're, they're pretty much the same level there. There's not really any major differences. Uh, you can just marginally see it's slightly lower on, on that, but not much when you have the wobble. Uh, okay, so this is the snag switch. Cream switch, snag, cream. Cream switch is sounding higher. Material? Possibly. If I don't bottom out and I'm being careful about it, you can hear the scratch. You can hear just the fraction of a scratch on the snag key, on a snag switch. It is there, but it's definitely not as pronounced. The sensation, though, is the cream switch is actually heavier. Uh, I don't remember what the, the spring weight is on the cream switch, but uh, yeah, it is actually a heavier spring weight than the snag switch. Hmm. Okay, so I'm not generally too much of a linear switch user. I don't mind them, uh, and I, I can and I will type on them. So <clears throat> when I have a chance to as well, just like I will with these all clacks, is that um, I will put them onto a board and do some proper typing with them and uh, get a sound sample, some kind of reference sound sample. I don't know if I've got many other switches at the moment that I can use as a reference base, but I'll see if I can dig some up and, um, yeah, do something with that. All right. So overall, just in summary, the all clacks are tactile. Um, they feel very tactile, but they also have a shorter travel. That longer pole means they bottom out sooner. Uh, the snag switches they feel smoother and lighter and less scratchy compared to the nk creams uh, a little bit of stem wobble but it's really gap against the housing and not uh the looseness of the housing so switch filming probably won't make a massive amount of difference you know look you could call them a meme switch but at the same time so many of the switches, the custom switches these days in the community are like that. And what can I say? You know, this this will have a place within our local hearts, shall we say, uh, for what it represents and the uh, heritage behind it, if you want to even say that at all. <laughs> all right, well, I want to say thank you to uh, AE Boards and the Keyboard Treehouse for making this video possible. Do head over and check out their website and what is available on offer there. All the stuff that is on the treehouse are from local Australian designers and vendors. Uh, so, you know, supporting local is fantastic. And if you are interested in checking out these switches based upon this video, then please do so. Uh, I'll put a link in the video description below. So at some point in time, I'll get together a board, put these on, have another quick video so you can hear what they sound like on a bigger board than just a two switch tester. Radio, well, 
they'll go into the collection. Uh, I'll find an appropriate place for each one of these to to live in. Uh, I do need to find an alternative way of managing this collection now that I'm starting to get more and more uh, switches joining into it. But we will we will get there. We will get there. Maybe I'll put that one up there next to the other linears. Stabbing my fingers. There we go. That can go in. And one of these ones will have to come out. <clears throat> uh, well, they're all clickies over there. There's tactiles. Maybe that'll uh, live. <clears throat> That's clicky on that side of the house. I'll have to live next to the T1. Okay, there you go. So that's uh, the switch collection ever slowly, slowly growing. Great. Well, thank you very much for checking out this video. Of course, please hit that uh, like button, subscribe button, bell notification button like everybody else asks you to do. Uh, but, you know, if you want to keep seeing stuff from this channel, then I would love and appreciate it if you do. So, of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.